Great to see everybody. I'm John Zadar. This is May 23rd. It's Monday. Welcome to On Top and Hot, where I like to share my due diligence on OTC and penny stocks. Today, I was out there trading. Oh, it was hard. It was really hard, folks. The OTC market is anorexic right now. The trades are getting even smaller. The volume is getting even lighter. But there's always something out there moving. But why is it moving? That's more the question, actually. So we're going to go look at some stocks that were moving today and see if we can figure out what had them on the rise. So the first stock we're going to be taking a look at is HPIL, HPIL Holdings. And we're going to be doing our initial due diligence. Where else? The OTCMarkets.com website. This is my go-to site for all my OTC stock references. This is updated every single day by the SEC and FINRA. So why should I run around the internet and Google looking for information when what I'm looking for is right here? Come here first. You can find it, then go searching. Makes life a lot easier, I promise. So HPIL finished today at a great price, 0.0012. There's only one extra digit on the other side of that one. There's not going to be another one or another one. So all this has to do is go up to nine and that becomes a two. And that happens pretty bloody quick. So you can double your money very quickly here on buying on the double zero one, waiting for double zero two. Yeah. She is a uh, pink limited. This means that she is late on filing, and boy, is she ever. Steve Brown, the CEO, got this company, oh, maybe a year and a half ago, something like that, and he had to clean it up. There was a lot of old problems with it, but he promised us that everything was great at one point and that he was going to be going pink current. And at that time, they also introduced a new device called the uh, Apogee Dynamics, which was a device that actually charges an electric car while it's running so that it never needs to stop to charge. It just never runs out of energy. Well, this got everybody excited and this actually ran to about a penny two, something like that, a thousand percent up. But he kept making promises that we were going current. This has been filed, we're going current. And we never did. And it really upset a lot of people. And even though he kept going on, he created games, he has got tokens, they've made acquisitions, there just hasn't been a lot of love shown for. Well, there's been some recent news and maybe things are going to change now because he realizes he was in deeper water than he thought he was and he's trying to get things fixed right now. They have a verified profile, a transfer agent verified. These are good. Thank God. That's perfect. We want to see that. And they are a shell risk, meaning that he's claiming he's in business. And you're going to see he has got a lot of subsidiaries and supposedly they're getting things going and doing things, but they're not making any money yet. We're believing this is around the corner because of the news that came out today. And we'll cover that in just a second. So what was the relative volume around HPIL today? Half as much. Now, in saying that, she did drop from 75 million to 40 million. But look at what we did today, folks. Six billion shares. If you've been watching this show, I tell you this pretty much every day. You've seen we are getting lower and lower and lower. A month ago, we were at 11.2 billion, and I was scared. Last week, we're at 7 billion, and I was scared, and now we're down to 6 billion. I'm more than scared, folks. I'm worried one day I'm going to come over here and the doors are going to be shut, closed due to lack of business. So it's getting desperate over here. But look, we are still doing $2.1 billion. It doesn't matter if we do 50 billion shares or we do 6 billion. Somehow we always do 2.1 billion and the trades are dropping. Folks, we were over 300,000 last week and it's been dropping, dropping, dropping. We're down to 235 trades. We are anorexic folks and that's a hell of a way to go. All right, so the volume has dropped. What is the share structure on this company? Oh my God, is that one of the most ridiculous share structures I have ever seen. Holy cow, 15.1 billion shares in the float. Oh my God. I'm not too crazy about that, folks, if you can't tell. That is ridiculous. Financials, they've got nothing. Absolutely nothing going here. Now, what is most interesting, considering that they are pink limited right now, they have their filings in. 
Here are their quarterly reports, amended quarterly reports, and an attorney letter, which you have to put in for an annual report. Well, their annual report came out over a month ago, and they're just now getting the attorney letter in. Since their financials are not audited by a CPA, we have to take their word for it. So what they do for our benefit is they have an attorney look them over. Now, he's not a CPA. He's not telling you all these numbers are right. He's just telling you from a legal standpoint, they look good. So he puts that letter in, and then it becomes a filing that is approved. Those are for annuals. Well, that just came in today. Now, the whole big thing with this company is getting that pink limited to pink current. I swear to God, he gets this to pink current, this company will start to move fast. It will. There's a lot of excitement around this company, at least there used to be, before we started seeing that it wasn't going to happen no matter what he promised. So, we do see all the filings are in there and... We don't have any new 8Ks, that's for acquisitions, reverse mergers, big news. Not always big news, but that's where you're going to find them, is the 8Ks. Speaking of news, let's go take a look at what we got over here. All right, I'm going to be jumping into a shareholder's letter here. This covers a lot of detail. Shareholder letters put everything in a nutshell for you, so that's kind of nice. But I want you to see here that uh, last month, yeah, over a month ago, uh, two both of these are last month. He filed a lawsuit against two different companies. GPL Ventures, which has been settled. You read in this shareholder's letters, they've settled this and they're happy with the way they've settled it. They were asking for $16 million, but in this letter, they don't tell you how much they got, but they said they're happy. Okay. And then they sued Lending Group LTD. Now, when I read this, it sounds to me like this group somehow bought and sold shares illegally. I'm not quite sure how it happened, but uh, HPIL, Stephen, is quite upset about it, and he says he wants to prove to the shareholders it isn't him that did all this damage. It was these people who were moving shares illegally. I don't know how that happens. So let's jump into this update shareholder letter that came out on March 24th. These are some key points that you can see is going on here. HPI Holdings is continuing to make progress on filings, updates, leveraging expert support from SRCO Accounting, Meraki Disclosures, and our attorney. Some of those news presses back there are them changing people who take care of their paperwork, getting better management, better people to get things done. So supposedly we're in better hands now, more capable hands. They then go and give us some updates on some of the things that he's working on. They've got a game online, Solomon's Revenge, Ahoy! The game continues to evolve in exciting ways. Is it on schedule for launch in the spring or summer of this year? So that should be coming out. Zippa, this is a platform. I'm not quite sure exactly what this is. Unique video editing enhancements complete with stickers and multi-track asset mixing are more than 50% completed. And then what I was telling you about, which really had me excited, was the uh, Apogee, Apogee er, Dynamics. They are going for proof of technology, process, progress is exciting, and firmly on schedule for a mid-22 release plan. This is exciting. I really want to see somebody come out with a self-charging unit for an electric car. I've heard of many companies working on it. So first mover advantage is just going to bust the market open. Imagine every electric car company is going to want to incorporate that on their cars. They also say that the initial patent submissions expected to be completed second quarter of this year ahead of the proof of technology release. That's good. And momentum continues in each targeted platform. The two-wheel, the four-wheel, and the multi-wheel and beyond. I'm not quite sure what they've got going on, folks. More DD is going to help. They also tell us here the company's new groundbreaking acquisition, Hum Token, is rapidly progressing and expects to be launching at the end of Q2. Folks, he's got a lot going on for Q2, doesn't he? They're trying to get their filings in order. They've got the Apogee coming on track with all of its paperwork, patents, proof of technology in Q2. You've got Hum Token coming in on Q2 as well as Solomon's Revenge. So sooner or later, they have to start making some money, right? And hopefully they go current really, really soon. So what other news did we have here? 
Well, we had news that came out today. And this is what changes my opinion about the company a little bit. It's one thing for the management to talk up their own company. It's one thing to see them doing things. I mean, that's all good, but maybe it isn't. But when you see another company, when you see somebody else who has, uh, what can you say, affluence, putting their money out there towards the company, now you've got my attention. Somebody who has billions is putting millions into this company, literally. Let's jump into this piece of news here. HPI Holdings secures $32 million in Canadian dollars capital commitment from GEM Global Yield. HPI Holdings is pleased to announce that it has secured $32 million capital commitment from GEM Global Yield for a 36-month term following the public listing of the company's common stock on the Canadian Stock Exchange. HPIL has not been anywhere except on the OTC. That's been the only market it has been able to appeal to. Looks like they're going to the Canadian market too. That is a good thing. They tell us here that HPIL has the option to increase the facility to $75.5 million subject to certain terms and conditions. And they tell us that Global Emergence Market is a $3.4 billion alternative investment group based in Paris, New York, and the Bahamas. So there you go. You've got a company that has billions of dollars who's seen something in this company. I don't know if it's the games. I don't know if it's the tokens. I don't know if it's the electric charging device. Whatever it is, somebody else has put big money into the company. So now may be a real good time to look at this. The chart shows it has had love before. And I'm telling you, that's the reason it lost its love because we didn't get pink current after being told over and over again it was there. All we had to do is wait two more weeks. So if that goes pink current, this thing is going to run, folks. That's my opinion. Let's go take a look at that chart. So we've jumped on over here to my free trading platform, Thinkorswim. You get it just for signing up for a free trading account with TD Ameritrade. Easy peasy. They don't ask for any money. Just keep your account open and you can use this just like I am. So this is a one-year, one-day chart we're looking at for HPIL. I brought this up to show you her high back here, 1.2 cents virtually. And right now we are at double zero one two. This is over a thousand percent right there. She has fallen tremendously. All this volume back here, especially that jump, all comes from the Apogee News, that electronic charging device. She jumped from double zero two up over a penny, more than 500% gains. Let's look at that six month, four hour chart. All right, of course, she has been falling under the 200 all this time, barely touching the 200 just occasionally. And today and yesterday, it looks like she is trying hard to get above it. We see the activity down here is picking up. Let's come on down to that 20 day, one hour view. <laughs> Picket fence. All right, her price here, folks, 0009, 0008, all the way down to 0006. And this is what you get with triple zeros, the picket fence, up and down, up and down, up and down. It doesn't move a lot. Once it gets out of the triple zeros, it gets its feet and it begins to walk around and get some movement. And you can see the activity is picking up. Coming down five day, five minute view. <laughs> picket fence, completely. And then it gets to right there is the break point, folks. Right there is double zero one. And what happens? Boink. Hey, I can walk. I can dance. Look at this thing go. So we've got a lot of activity, a lot of bouncing. Compared to that, this is all over the place. It has now bounced off the 200, bounced off at a second time, third time it didn't even need to. Now, I'm not going to say this is going to run, but it looks like it's got potential now. The filings look like they could go current. I'm not going to promise anything there. They got a ton of things that are launching right now. Q2 of 2022. We are in the second quarter right now. So there's a lot of things happening. And another company is just throwing millions of dollars at this company and is willing to double it up if they can show milestones down the road. So this could be a real good time to consider an entry point on this stock. This is a beautiful price, folks. As soon as it just gets up to double zero two right here. All right, let's go to double zero two four. That's where it's actually at. 
That is where you're going to double your money, right there. And a penny, I want to show you. Right here is a penny. And if we go to two cents, I just want you to see the spread here. Okay. That's the spread between one and two cents. This is the spread that you've got to cover to double your money. You want to cover that to double your money? Or you want to cover that? And by the time this gets from here to there, that is a thousand percent gains. Just getting to a penny, your $100 bill turns into a thousand. Your $10 bill turns into 100, just like that. So look at this, do some more DD. There's a lot of information and I do like their Apogee device. That is exciting to me. They get that out in the market. They can show proof of concept of the technology. They get it patented because it actually works. The science works. And they can get any car dealer to put it into their car, including their own car. Maybe they're the first to have a self-charging electric car that hits the market. Boom! Wouldn't that be something exciting? So do some DD, folks. There is a lot to go on with this company. They've got Hum Token I don't know anything about. They've got their new games I don't know anything about. Because to be honest, once I got out of the company, I just didn't pay much attention to it. But now, eh, I'm going to look at it too. Second stock we're going to take a look at is CGAC. This is Cold Green Apparel Core. A bit unique. This is a triple zero, and I'll tell you why in just a minute. Triple zero seven is how she finished with 40% gains. She's on the pink tier and current, has those precious green ticks over here for a verified profile and a transfer agent. We like that. And she's a shell company, a clean shell company. That means that she's not doing any business right now. She's looking for a deal, a reverse merger, which is really where all of this begins. The stocks we're looking at right now are the stocks that had high trades. They had a lot of trades around them. There's a link up here, current markets right there. You go to that page, they'll show you how many trades every single company has had. And they put them in order so you can see. Well, there were a lot of triple zero companies that had high trades today. So why did I pick this one? Well, for one main reason, Karen Courier. Karen Courier has been involved with this company from the beginning, but has just been made the COO. And that's what got my attention. Now, this company has been trying to make a deal. They're trying to make a merger right now, but they are actually being stifled by the OTC regulations. I don't know what the problem is, but they can't get around it. And that's really what the news is all about today. They hired a company to help them get through this wall. And Karen Courier is, is leading the charge for this. So that's really what's going on. What is their business? Well, this is what they say they do. This is in every single news press, even the most current ones. And it is in the most current financial filing. But they're not doing anything right now. So one could presume that this is what they want to do. This is their target. However, when you look at the news from years ago, they were working with apparel back then. So I'm kind of thinking they're just recycling this information because they don't have anything else to put in there. I honestly don't know. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Well, it was good. Jumped from 65 million to 101 million. Not bad. Let's hope the share structure is good. <laughs> not good. We got another very high float. No, it's not as high as the last one, but it still definitely qualifies as very high. 3.8 billion shares in the float. We're not going to have any financials here because she is a shell company. She hasn't got any business. Disclosures. Well, we know her financials are going to be on time. She was late, but she got that taken care of. All good there. And sec filings, nothing since last year. So let's go over to the news and see what is going on over here. So here you go. This is 2017 right there, and they're talking about golf apparel. And down here in 2016, acquiring 10 star apparel. I don't think maybe that description really has anything to do with the company, but I don't know for a fact. I really don't know why they would put it in their most current financial, which I'll show you here in just a second. But you can see here in December, 
Karen Courier became the COO of the company, which is a big deal. Karen Courier has saved a lot of companies from the expert market. She went and got companies that were dead in the water, had no management, literally had been abandoned, got into trouble and got yanked off the market because no one was there to file the filings. She went to the courts, got custodialship of these companies, cleaned them up, made them pink, put them on the market, and then gets deals for them, just like we're talking about now. And she has lots of companies she's been working with. Eyeless, SBES, I think uh, ICOA. I really can't remember. 14 companies at last count that I remember. So she's leading the charge here, and that's why we're looking at this company. And then the news that came out a few days ago, Code Green Apparel announces that they will be joining forces with dysfunctional rehabilitation. Now that sounds like something else, but really, it just tells you here. As a matter of fact, I think I've got it right there. ACGAC continues to struggle with the new regulations imposed by the OTC markets and the ability to bring a viable business model into the company. We've decided to join forces with dysfunctional rehabilitation to be able to merge a new business model into our company, stated George Powell, CEO of Code Green Apparel. Now, I also want you to see a little bit of information from their latest financial filing. I can't remember where it's all at, but it is highlighted. All right, now they tell us here they tell us here that the public float right there is $468 million. Now, that is a huge difference from 3.8 billion shares. And this was just on March 31st, 2022. So, I'm thinking that this is the number we should be trusting. Flowing down, we're looking at all the people who own shares in this company, the hedge funds, institutions, stuff like that. Boy, there's a lot of it, right? There you go, Karen Courier. She did the financial reports for this. She is also the CEO. Oh my goodness, I thought it was the COO. Maybe she's been kicked up another notch. CEO, like I said, she is leading the charge. All right, issuers, business, products, and services. No operations. However, there is that exact same description right inside here. And when did this come out? This came out on the... Uh, let me see. It's come over here to disclosures. That last financial report came out uh, two days ago. So all the information in there is the most current information they got. So even though the news says that Karen Courier is the COO, we've seen in the new financial that she is the CEO, which means that the old CEO is out, George Powell. He's got to be out. He has to either have a new position or no position at all. So Karen Courier just went to the head of the pack. So she is now the CEO. They have no operations, but we still see that description in there for textiles. So I'm not quite sure what's going on here, except that they seem to be on the edge and ledge of making a deal. And when they make a deal, the stock should jump. So let's go look at that chart and see if we can find an opportune time to get in. So we're looking at CGAC, six month, four hour chart, way below the 200 back here, but boy, wasn't she running in a nice channel? Higher highs and higher lows. Boink, 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 perfectly rhythm. And then she lost it here. And then you have both the 200 hall and the 200 SMA collide right here and there was a drop in price now it isn't because of the smas though it sure looks like it doesn't it i went and looked at the date and there was actually a shareholder news press that came out this day and it wasn't all that exciting and you can see the investors felt it and she fell hard and right now she seems to be getting close to the 200. she was close about 20 days ago fell away hard hit a low down here and has been bouncing off of that and again is low we got a crossover on the four hour and everything is working its way back up. Let's take a look at that 20 day, one hour. So she's been down here, right? She is a triple. She was down here at the triples and then she actually got a launch up into the double zero one territory. Would have been nice for her to stay up there. But you see that once she started going towards that double one, she started getting actual movement. Down here in the triple zeros, you just don't get any movement. It has fallen back down into the triple zeros and is right now sitting on top of the 200 day haul, crossing over the 50 day, just under the 200. 
and all of the technicals are pushing up. She does look good. I cannot deny that. Bounced off to 200 here five days ago. Hit a high of 001. Lost 50% of that. Hit this low bubble of 0005 and is now pretty much in the middle at 7. Just over our 200. She has just stepped over the 200. We got a crossover on the MACD. RSI is in mid 60s. Very good, very good. And above the green pointing up. Folks, this looks good. Right now, this looks really good for a continuation. And remember, if we can get this stock out of the triple zero, she'll start taking bigger steps. Baby steps down here, baby steps. We get up here and that's way up here. I understand it, but that's where she went just the other day. So once she's gotten up there, I expect her to get up there again. And with Karen Courier, now CEO, that's even better than COO, Chief Executive Officer, not Chief Operation Officer. She has also got a new company helping her to get around whatever barriers are preventing them from getting this merger. And once this merger is announced, this is going to take off, folks. And you don't want to talk about fast gains. You get in down here, by the time you hit a penny, oh, gracious, I think you're at 1,300%, 1,400% gains. You can make some real good money at these prices, but you got to get in at the right time or you're going to be holding for a long time. All right, the last company we're taking a look at is Toner, ticker T-O-N-R. This is one of the highest traded stocks on the entire OTC market today. She did over 450 trades. Finished today at a great price, double zero, double one, with 57% gains. And you know how she got those gains? Climbing out of the triple zeros up to the double zeros, where hopefully she's going to get her footing and a bigger stride and start to move quicker. But what I really like is that price. Now, I know, I know, I harp on this all the time, but I'm going to say it one more time because honestly, folks, this is the most valuable piece of information that I personally can give you. Buying on the one, and this one particular, double zero one, going from one to two is the smallest movement you can possibly imagine. And when it goes from one to two, you've just made 100% gains. You've doubled your money. Go to three, the next digit, you've tripled your money. Hit four, another 100%. Five, another 100%. Six, seven, and eight, another 300%. This is the fastest, biggest gains you can make on the market. I love buying on the ones. So she is on the pink tier. She's current. She's got her green ticks over there. Looks real good in that regard. However, she is a shell risk. That means she's in business, but she's not reporting any revenues. They're not making any money. And they did not report any financials today. No, they did not report any filings. No news. Why is she running? Well, as far as I can tell, because of one tweet from the company. <laughs> the tweet, catalyst-wise, it's paper thin. It's got nothing going for it, and yet this stock took off today. Why? Well, as far as I can figure, speculation. OTC traders love to trade based on speculation. They see more value in telling them what your plan on doing rather than what you actually did. A great example is when you see a PR come out that says we have a letter of intent to do a deal with such and such a company. It's not a done deal. They're just talking it over. Well, that letter of intent will make that price run to the moon. And then, in short time, it falls. Then a little while later, they actually close the deal. But what does the chart do? Bloop! That's it. And that's what I think is happening here. People are investing based on speculation and hope. So what does this company do? Well, they tell us that they are an emerging growth company that is expanding into the world of digital commerce initiatives and finance, IP licensing, cryptocurrency, and high-valued NFTs. And that's really what their news covers. There's no big deals going on, but they are constantly making improvements on their business. So what was the relative volume around that tweet today? Well, <laughs> kick in. That's what it's doing. 44 million to 350 million. That's really good, considering that our trades fell today, our volume and shares fell today, that is pretty good. Okay, here we go. I'm going to look at the share structure. Please be a low float. Please be a low float. No, oh, doit. It's not. 3.4 billion in the float. No low floats today, folks. No, that half billion did not count as a low float. 
Financials, they're not going to have anything because they're a shell risk. Disclosures, I don't think we have anything here because as I said, I looked. Nope, nothing there. And the news, well, I'll show it to you. It's about them working in their finance. The only thing I found interesting was this here. Toner One World partners with Unique to launch digital human technology. And I thought, what the heck is that? So I did jump into it to read it. What it turns out to be is a artificial intelligent voice that tells you about company updates. So you don't have to read them. You can have this person, Elizabeth, they call her. <laughs> Elizabeth will give you the company's updates. Ta-da! Um, then they've got two debts here that they've converted, which is good news. And they've got their NFTs that they're working on. Toner One World announces development of first ever mint your own feature for major NFT brands. And then this one, I really don't get this. From 3,000 Walmart stores to smart contracts. Toner One's world's pretty girls NFTs are showing early signs of success. Well, I read this. The word Walmart never shows up anywhere except right there. So <laughs> I don't know what that was about. So don't believe everything you read, at least not in the headlines. So this ran, as far as I'm concerned, over a tweet. Let's take a look at that tweet. This is the company's account. So we're not just getting it from just anybody. And this tweet came out four hours ago. We know everyone is looking forward to news from Toner. It's coming and will be well worth the wait. I promise. Corinda J. Melton, CEO. Now I scrolled down to see if there was anything more because what is that? What is that? Of course there's going to be news. Everybody has news eventually. They didn't tell us when. They didn't tell us what. They didn't even tell us what about. Just that there's going to be news. Paper thin. And I don't see anything down here. They tell us that they are releasing disclosures, but that's April 26th and that's May 15th. So there's nothing new under the sun, as they say. But she ran hard today and people are obviously anticipating something. Let's go see what that chart looks like. All right, we are looking at Toner, ticker T-O-N-R, six month, four hour chart. And I see we've been here before. We've looked at Toner. That's what I do with these timelines when I remember. Shows me when we've looked at it. We looked at that here. We thought it was gonna move for some reason. I can't remember why. The next day it did have a wee bit of gain, nothing impressive, but look at the day after that. And the day after that, and after that, wow. Whatever we looked at, for whatever reason, we did catch it in time. Let's come on back to that full view on the four hour, six month. We got a high bubble here of about 1.75 cents and a that's <laughs> over here in the other corner. Ooh, triple zero four was her low bubble. I do believe triple zero six is the low over on this end. And right now we're at double zero, double one. She has been under the 200 for a few months. And today on the tweet, look at that volume. Oh my God, all that volume for a lame tweet. Nothing personal, Toner, but you didn't tell us a whole lot of information. And look what you got for that. Wow. Volume is incredible. Technicals are screaming. Look, at MACD is working its way towards the signal with a very strong incline. RSI has boosted itself all the way from under 40 to over 60. And our CCI is at 325. Folks, that top line there, that's 100. That's a soft ceiling. 200, well, that's pretty much where people expect it to really hit. We are over 300 right now on the four hour. Booming, just booming on a tweet. Let's come down to that 20 day, one hour. Had a poke here 20 days ago through the 200 and a poke here, but she didn't just go through it. She got on top of it and is staying on it. And again, the technicals are just hot, hot, hot. Five day, five minute picket fence right on the 200 was not moving at all now what time did that tweet come out they said four hours ago so that would be just around two o'clock just around two o'clock in the afternoon let's see this is uh right about here right that is two o'clock on the money folks Two o'clock on the money. She was doing absolutely nothing until that tweet came out and she took off from triple zero eight to double zero one two. 
from 8 to 12. That's a 50% gain on a lame tweet. Nothing personal, Toner, but you didn't give us a whole lot. And still, they got the biggest day of volume they've had in a long time, biggest gain they've had in a long time, and they kept most of the gains. It fell from 0012 to 0011. That is outstanding. Technicals on the five minute. Yeah, it fell. We got a negative crossover here. The CCI is still actually showing activity and growth, as is the RSI, pointing in the right direction. Folks, I don't know when the news is going to come out. I don't know what the news is. I have no clue. They didn't tell us anything, but there is a huge jump. Maybe this is worth watching because the news is going to come out soon. I don't know. But in either case, you can see how just a simple tweet. Now, maybe because the market's starving for activity. I have no clue. But that was impressive because the tweet only said, we're going to do what we normally do. We're going to be putting out news sometime. <laughs> uh, all right, folks, that does it for today. So there you have it. Those three stocks were some of the hottest running stocks on the OTC market. Not huge catalysts, not a whole lot really going on, but the market is starving for activity right now. So wherever we can find activity, whatever reason has got a stock moving is worthy of considering, even if it's a lame tweet. Remember folks, DD is your friend and it's everywhere. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you folks. Thank you.